Hello everyone, I am Prakya Jain, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, AJIT Mangalore. Today I am going to discuss about Chapter 2 of Module 2, that is Buoyancy. So in this video, I am going to discuss about Buoyancy, Center of Buoyancy, Meta Center, Metacentric Height and this is Application. So first let's go for Definition of Buoyancy. So what is Buoyancy? So before going to Definition, just have a look into this diagram. So there is a mass of 2 kg that is immersed in a liquid liquid say there's a water so 2 kg because of immersion of or dipping of 2 kg of mass there is displacement of 2 kg of water so what is this principle called as this is called as archimedes principle you hope you studied in second pu so the principle of flotation or principle of uh, uh, buoyancy so or Archimedes principle so because of immersion of 2 kg of mass there is a displacement of 2 kg of water so now let's go for definition of buoyancy when a body is immersed in a fluid an upward force is exerted by the fluid on the body this upward force is equal to weight of the fluid displaced by the body and is called force of buoyancy or simply buoyancy or buoyant force so this buoyant force is, uh, the is the force exerted by the fluid uh, on the body so that is equal and opposite to the weight o we all know weight is acting in downward direction through centroid so here the uh, 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 force of buoyancy that is going to act in upward direction that is equal and opposite to the weight of the body so you can see here buoyancy so weight is acting in downward direction and uh, a buoyant force is acting in upward direction. So from this diagram we can conclude buoyant force is equal and opposite to uh, weight of the body. So center of buoyancy. So what is center of buoyancy? It is defined as the point through which the force of buoyancy is supposed to act. So it's a point at which the force of uh, buoyancy or simply buoyant force it is going to act. As the force of buoyancy is vertical force and is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body, the center of buoyancy will be the center of gravity of fluid displaced. So about this thing I am going to explain in next slide. So it is a, just remember for time's sake, center of buoyancy is the point at which buoyant force is going to act. So now let's go for meta center. So what is meta center? So before going to definition of meta center, just have a look into the diagram. So there is a floating body. So there is a center of gravity G and a center of buoyancy B. So buoyant force that, that is FB is going to act at point B and through centroid there is a weight is acting in downward direction. Now what you are supposed to do here is just give tilting to that body whatever that is immersed in liquid. So because of tilting of the body you can see there. Uh, the buoyant point of buoyancy that is going to shift to point B1. So that point B1 is the new center of buoyancy at tilted position. So because of angular displacement, say uh, you are going to move that body uh, with the angle of theta in clockwise direction. So because of that you are going to get new center of buoyancy uh, but center of gravity that remains as it is. So now uh, uh, there is a normal axis that is going to pass through G and B. Now just draw one point, a line that is passing through B1. So that is going to intersect the normal axis at point B. That point, uh, uh, normal point, uh, it, that is going to intersect the point, uh, normal axis at point M. That point M is called as meta center. So it is very simple concept. There is a floating body with the center of gravity and center of buoyancy give some angular displacement theta in clockwise direction because of angular displacement the, uh, the uh, center of buoyancy that is going to shift from B to B1 so now buoyant force is going to act uh, at point B1 so draw one line passing through B1 in such a way that that is going to intersect normal axis at point M this point M that is called as center of meta center so it is defined as the point about which body starts oscillating when the body is tilted by a small angle or when the body is given uh, with small displacement, angular displacement. The metacenter may be also defined as the point at which line of action of force of buoyancy will meet the normal axis of the body when the body is given a small angular displacement. So that's what you can write any of the definition. First definition is, is the point about which the body starts oscillating. Second definition whatever I explained using this diagram uh, the, the center of buoyancy that is going to meet the normal axis at point 
some point that point is called as meta center now let's go for uh, uh, the experimentation let the body is given a small angular displacement in the clockwise direction as shown in figure b the center of buoyancy uh, which is the center of gravity of displaced liquid uh, or center of gravity of portion of the body submerged in liquid this is very important for center of buoyancy so center of buoyancy can be calculated by using the portion of the body that is immersed in liquid if point it, uh, is the length uh, of the body that is immersed in liquid that means the center of buoyancy lies at 0.4 that is exactly 50% of uh, uh, the uh, length of immersion in liquid so that's that's what they're explaining here now uh, center of gravity uh, uh, okay uh, uh, now center of buoyancy that will be shifted towards right from the normal axis let it be b1 as shown in figure b the line of action of force of buoyancy in this new position will intersect the normal axis of the body at some point say m this point m is called as meta center now meta centric height so you can use same diagram very important definition buoyancy center of buoyancy meta center meta centric height now distance mg so the distance mg that is from meta center to center of gravity along normal axis that is called as meta centric height or you can simply call it as mg or gm so distance mg that is the distance between meta center m is meta center of a floating body and center of gravity g is center of gravity or centroid of the body is called meta centric height so there's a definition of meta centric height now experimental method of determination of meta centric height so you had to get gm there's a meta centric height by using experimentation there is one more method that's the analytical method by using analytical method also we can find meta centric height now let's go for experimental method this is very important again from examination point of view so the meta centric height of a floating vessel so this uh, this is meta center is applicable to floating uh, floating body so the meta centric height of a floating vessel can be determined provided we know the center of gravity of the flows floating vessel that is g let w1 is the weight placed over the cent center of the vessel as shown in figure a the vessel is floating so there is a, a vessel with center of gravity that is given so upon that body there is a weight w1 is placed let w equal to weight of the vessel including w1 so that includes the small weight that is placed over the body g equal to center of gravity of the vessel and b equal to center of buoyancy of the vessel so center of buoyancy means is a point at which this uh, buoyant force is going to act now what you are supposed to do is you have to give small angular displacement so the weight w1 is or angular displacement uh, or you can just move the weight uh, here so angular displacement can be given in uh, uh, experimentation or in this case there is a weight w1 so w1 is placed over the vessel now w1 does that weight small weight w1 is moved across the vessel towards right through a distance x you can see in diagram b so initially it was at uh, at the center of the vessel now it is moved through a distance x that is w weight w1 is moved through a, to a distance towards right so uh, the vessel will be tilted because of the movement of the weight w1 the vessel will be til tilted the angle of heel or angle of displacement is measured by means of plumb line and protractor attached on the vessel there is a protractor attached to experimental setup so that is going to measure angular displacement or it is called as angle of heel the new center of gravity of the vessel will shift to g1 as the weight w1 has moved towards right also the center of buoyancy will change to b1 as the vessel has tilted so in meta center definition the center of gravity uh, was like constant it at that point was constant but in this case because of the movement of the weight the center of gravity also going to uh, change so that is from g to g1 again the, that uh, center of buoyancy that is going to change from b to b1 so under equilibrium the moment caused by the moment of the load w1 through a distance x must be equal to moment caused by the shift of center of gravity from g to g1 so because of the moment uh, of the weight uh, w1 to a distance x there's a moment moment is force into uh, distance now force is here weight w1 distance is x so the moment due to uh, 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 moment due to change of the moment due to moment of w1 is w1 into x now the moment due to change of 
uh, gravity so change in distance is g g1 so uh, what is the force acting at g that is w so w into g g1 is the moment so the moment due to change of g equal to g g1 into w now we have to get g g1 so that can be obtained by using diagram c so you apply sin theta concept here sin theta equal to opposite by hypotenuse so what is opposite that is g g1 divided by hypotenuse is gm so now we have to make uh, alteration here in order to get g g1 so g g1 equal to sin theta equal to actually g g1 divided by gm so g g1 equal to sin theta into gm so for small angle uh, uh, theta sin theta equal to tan theta so you can replace sin theta by tan theta so in place of g g1 you are supposed to substitute w into g1 into sin theta as a theta is very small sin theta equal to tan theta the moment due to change of g equal to g g1 into w so that is equal to w into gm into tan theta so the moment i that about this thing i already explained the moment due to moment of w1 that is equal to w1 into x now both are equal, equal under equilibrium so w1 into x equal to w into gm into tan theta hence gm equal to w1 into x divided by w tan theta this is an experimental method of determination of metacentric height very important concept now let's go for uh, the application of meta center as well as center of buoyancy the condition of equilibrium of floating and submerged bodies a submerged or a floating body what is submerged body submerged body means the body is completely immersed in a liquid now floating body means some portion is outside the liquid and some portion is inside the liquid it's said to be stable if it comes back to the original position after slight disturbance so uh, the body is said to be stable if it comes back to initial position after giving some uh, angular displacement the relative position of center of gravity that is g and center of buoyancy b1 of a body determines the stability of submerged body depending on the position of g and b1 for submerged body we can determine stability of the body now let's go for stability of submerged body so consider a balloon which is com completely submerged in air so balloon is kept uh, uh, in an uh, open atmosphere let the lower portion of the balloon contains heavier material so that its center of gravity is lower than its center of buoyancy as shown in figure A so you can see there so the lower portion of the balloon contains some weight this is shown by some hash line because of the weight weight is going to act downward so uh, center of gravity is at a lower position compared to uh, the center of buoyancy the weight W is acting through G vertically in the downward direction while the buoyant force FP is acting vertically up. So this is according to definition of uh, buoyant force that is the vertical force equal and opposite to the weight. So next uh, for the equilibrium of the balloon W equal to FB. So under equilibrium uh, weight of the body equal to buoyant force. If the balloon is given an in angular displacement in the clockwise direction as shown in figure a then w and fb constitute a couple or moment acting in position so uh, so uh, this is a couple is the equal and opposite force that is acting with some perpendicular distance so it is uh, w and fb that is going to give uh, give rise to a couple acting in this position shown by figure a it is in stable equilibrium let, let us discuss one by one stable equilibrium unstable and neutral equilibrium so stable equilibrium when w equal to fb and point b is above g so the body is said to be in stable equilibrium this is very important for stable equilibrium point b should be above center of gravity so this is a condition for stable equilibrium so in stable equilibrium this you can see the first diagram so because of the weight the lower portion contains some weight so center of gravity is lower than center of buoyancy so you can see in a diagram first diagram so give some angular displacement to balloon in clockwise direction so because of angular displacement there is a couple produced so couple produced because of uh, the change in position of g and b so you can see there uh, the g is acting in downward direction fb is acting in upward direction that gives rise to a couple in a counterclockwise direction so you are giving a displacement in clockwise direction the couple produced in counterclockwise direction so th those are equal and opposite so it brings back the object to or balloon to initial position so it is said to be stable equilibrium now unstable equilibrium second diagram you can see there so for unstable equilibrium center of buoyancy should be below 
the center of gravity so you can see the diagram there so uh, g is above the center of buoyancy so g, uh, through, through g there is a weight acting w and through b there is a buoyant force fb is acting now give small angular displacement to this balloon in clockwise direction now the couple produced to due to uh, uh, w and fb that is in again clockwise direction so clock this angular displacement also clockwise direction again couple produced in a clockwise direction so the balloon is not going to break, uh, uh, come back to original position so you can see there so g is acting downward uh, uh, w is acting downward yeah fb is acting upward so it gives us to a couple in clockwise direction because of that the body is not going to come back to original position so this condition is called as unstable equilibrium now last one neutral equilibrium so where the point of uh, center of gravity and center of buoyant force buoyancy that is going to coincide so that is called as neutral equilibrium so that is shown in this diagram if w equal to fb and b and g are the, at the same point as shown in figure the body is said to be in neutral equilibrium next let's go for stability of a floating body or for stability of floating body metacentric is important for stability of submerged body center of buoyancy is important so here stability of floating body the stability of floating body is determined from the position of cent meta center that is m in case of floating body the weight of the body is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced so this is archimedes principle weight of the body equal to weight of the liquid displaced so stable equilibrium so first diagram you can see there uh, there is a point g through which the weight of the body that is going to act and point b through which the center of uh, buoyant force is that is going to act so that is equal and opposite now give small angular displacement or disturbing couple in clockwise direction so uh, now center of buoyancy that is that gets shifted from b to b1 so uh, at b1 now b1 is the new position at which the buoyant force that is going to act through g there is a weight w is acting in uh, uh, downward direction so the line drawn through b1 or the center of buoyancy produced meet the normal axis at point em so that point m is called as meta center so now through b1 there is a uh, fb is acting g there is a w so that gives rise to a couple in clockwise uh, anti clockwise direction now you are giving uh, uh, displacement in angle uh, uh, clockwise direction clockwise direction but couple produced due, uh, due to uh, fb and w that is in counter clockwise so because of that those are equal and opposite the body comes back to initial position or original position so that is called as stable equilibrium so for stable equilibrium of floating body m should be above g now let's go for unstable equilibrium where m is below g in case of a submerged body there was like g should be uh, uh, below uh, b if for stable equilibrium and g should be above uh, b in unstable equilibrium you have to remember for above for uh, uh, stable equilibrium in case of uh, the submerged body uh, 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 submerged body center of buoyancy should be above uh, and here in case of uh, uh floating body center meta center should be above so this is the concept you have to remember here so if the point m is above g the floating body will be in stable equilibrium as shown in figure a if slight angular displacement is given to a floating body in the clockwise direction the center of buoyancy shifts from b to b1 such that the vertical line through b1 cuts m then the buoyant force fb through b1 and weight w through g constitute a couple acting in anti clockwise direction and bringing the floating body to the original position now unstable equilibrium so you can see the diagram b unstable equilibrium m is below g so m is below g so first diagram so there's a center of gravity g and center of buoyancy you can see there the g is acting at a point uh, above b uh, and b is act, uh, through b there is a uh, buoyant force is acting now what you're supposed to do is here so just give angular displacement to body in clockwise direction so because of the angular displacement so the center of buoyancy that gets shifted from b to b1 so the uh, center of buoyancy uh, the, the buoyant force if produced meet the normal axis at a point m that is below g so that you have to remember here if you are going to draw m above g then it becomes stable equilibrium so here uh, the buoyant force produced that means the normal axis at a point m that is below g now the uh, force acting through b1 and force acting through 
G that give rise to a couple in uh, clockwise direction. Again, you are giving displacement in clockwise direction. So those are uh, uh, because of that the body is not going to come back to original position. Now neutral equilibrium. The uh, if the point M is at the center of gravity of the body, the floating vessel will be in neutral equilibrium. So M and G at the same point, then it is called as neutral equilibrium. So last one, using analytical method, this derivation one time they have asked, but it is a complicated one. If you want, you can follow the, uh, you can read that thing using material. So metacentric height, so GM. So here there is, a, this is again for floating body. So there's a body ABCD that is floating uh, in some say liquid water. So there's a center of gravity G and center of buoyancy B. So give angular displacement in clockwise direction because of the angular displacement center of buoyancy that shifts from B to B1. So by using this concept there, there's a, a two wedge shape wedge shapes are produced you can see there B O B1 and uh, A O A1. So by using that you have to calculate the couple by using that you can get metacentric height so metacentric height equal to gm so that is equal to i by v minus bg so what is i so i is the moment of area of plan of the body at water surface about the axis yy what is plan plan means is the top view so moment of inertia uh, moment of uh, moment of the area of the plan of the body at water surface about the axis yy for the uh, rectangular shape it, it becomes l into b cube divided by 12 so the, it is with respect to top view not with respect to front view so what is bg so there's a b is center of buoyancy g is uh, center of gravity so it is a distance between center of gravity and center of buoyancy so this formula is very important for solving the problem gm equal to i by v minus bg what is v v is a volume of liquid displaced if it is water then it is a volume of liquid water displaced if it is oil then it is a volume of oil displaced so this formula is very important metacentric height gm equal to i by v minus bg okay thank you